talk about trail. Also here this morning, Arthur Jeff Benedict. His book, The Mormon Way of Doing Business, was mentioned in Armand's story. Welcome. Good, good morning. So what's the point here? The point here is that it seems to me that there are a lot of interesting aspects and good stories about Mitt Romney that have not yet come out. This yeah. is a man who's been on the campaign trail since he ran in 2008. It's amazing that these stories haven't come out because the big question that's been there forever is who is he? Who, what's behind the, the front? And these stories showcase what Mitt Romney's really about. I mean, a guy who takes six hours off on a campaign trail to dig out someone's stump, a man he doesn't even know and he's never met and he'll probably never see again, mm -hmm. uh, gets dirty, gets sweaty, and, and there are no reporters there. Now, what's interesting about this is that the critical comment about Mitt Romney has been that he doesn't seem authentic and he's not comfortable with his own story. So this goes right to the heart of that. And I think he actually is real comfortable with his own story. The, the thing is, he just doesn't tell that story very often. These incidents are, are really good portals into what this guy's really about when he's not in front of a camera. What is this mm -hmm. guy? I think you learn a lot about a man when you say, what does he do when no one's looking no one and when he doesn't looking. have to do anything? What does he do with his time? What this guy usually does with his time is he's serving other people. And he's been doing that long before he was a candidate. And that's what I think is, is missing, what people don't understand. I met Mitt Romney years ago when uh, Susan St. James and Dick Ebersol lost their son in a plane crash, and I went to the service, and Mitt Romney was there, and he was so tender and so touching and so kind. And I recently saw Susan St. James recently, and I said, do you remember that? And I said, why don't people ever get to see that side and understand that's the type of guy that Mitt Romney's there, who's there to help his friends, who doesn't ask for a lot of fanfare. And it's interesting, Armin, in your report, you said that he thinks that talking about it is a way of bragging, but maybe we do need to brag a little bit. And it, well, that's part of Mormonism, and I think you know, Mitt's, not to not to well, toot your own horn. You're, you're taught from the from you know boyhood that you, you perform acts of service and you're given a lot of opportunities in the Mormon church to do it but at the same time you're told you don't go out and toot your own horn you're not doing these things for publicity or to get a pat on the back and Mitt's been doing this his whole life and I think that there's there's a little bit of tension there between all these things that he's done his whole life you know do you want to stand up now on a campaign trail and and do this and mm -hmm. I, I think that he doesn't. How well do you know the candidate? How well do I know him? Yeah. Well, I, I know the family pretty well. I mean, I've been in his house, and I'm good friends with one of his sons, really good friends. We're pretty close, uh, so I've known them for years. And um, it's not often that you know someone who's running for president, and you, you see him in a little different way than when they're on the campaign trail. Are you supporting him? I am. Yeah. You know what's interesting, too, just in talking to Dave Checkets, um, I think guys like Checkets and, and John Turney and, and Bob Gay in your book are now speaking on behalf of Mitt because I think they're feeling like the tide needs to turn a little bit in Mitt's direction as to the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. And Checkets, who you know, knows right. everybody. Yeah. Politicians, presidents, commissioners like David Stern. He said to me yesterday that, that Mitt Romney is one of the five smartest people he's ever met in his okay. life. That's saying something with all the people that Dave Checkets yes. knows. And why, Jeff, is it a negative because you're wealthy? What's wrong with the narrative, yes, I'm wealthy, I'm successful, I worked really hard, I've made some smart business decisions? I don't know why that's not embraced in some way. I, I think there must be a way to do that without coming across as, you know, I'm, I'm some arrogant, right. out-of-touch guy. I don't think it is a negative. I mean, who... who we want a leader who's been successful. Right now, the economy is the biggest issue, and it's going to continue to be. And this is someone who's been at the top of that world for a long time. So I don't think it's a negative. I but don't it's painted as a negative for him, that he's but, out of touch and doesn't really... I'm not sure it's really... painted as a negative. I, or... I think the issue is his inability to be able to have a narrative that explains it, which you just said. Yeah. yeah. You know, that being successful in America is something many of us admire. Want to do. But he hasn't been comfortable being able to create a narrative that expresses that idea. Yes. The yes. other thing that's interesting, and Jeff, you and I are friends, and we've done a lot of work together, but the question to me is, is it because Mitt has helped a lot of Mormons, and the cynic may say, well, he's just helping people of the Mormon faith, to yeah. which you say what? Well, th th that's just not accurate, because cer certainly he's done that. He's been a leader in the Mormon church, so naturally he's helped a lot of Mormons over the years, but a lot of the people that he's worked with, most of the people he's worked with are not Mormons, mm -hmm. and he's done a lot of work for people who aren't Mormon, and he's, d he's done that again through his whole career. Well, now as people are speaking up, we'll see if that makes a difference. Jeff Benedict, thanks Thank for coming. Good to see you. Good Armin, always good to see you. Glad to be here. It is now.